Hello there, uh, it's a new year, so a new add-on. Uh, this is called the Shape Generator. Uh, so this is uh, a plugin that will randomly generate lots of different shapes, um, uh, lots of different extruded shapes of different lengths and sizes. Uh, you can tweak various parameters to get lots of different effects. And I'll be taking you through the those uh, at the uh, in a minute. Uh, you can add beveled effects and smooth effects as well. First of all, uh, just to show you how to install the add-on, go to User Preferences and the Add-on section. Click on Install from File and navigate to the folder where you've saved the zip file. Uh, it should be uh, down here somewhere. Let's have a look. There it is. Uh, just select the zip file, click install add-on from file and uh, make sure the checkbox is checked there and then click save user settings just to be sure it will open next time you open Blender. Now you access the um, shape by the standard add menu uh, called shape generator and now I'll take you through some of the settings in uh, greater detail. So as I just said uh, you can access the shape generator through the add menu by clicking shift A and shape generator here uh, and uh, the standard extruded shape will appear. You can also add access it through the add menu along the bottom. So here it's created sort of a random extruded shape. So if I just take down the amount of extrusions here down to zero you'll see uh, how the add-on works. So it's the add-on starts off with just creating a sort of st standard rectangular cube um, the size of the parameters you've given in the extrusion uh, box. Now what I've done here is I've just disabled the mirroring for a moment and added uh, just one extrusion. So what this extrusion has done is uh, created uh, one extrude um, and it's given it a size between the minimum and maximum values in the extrude options here. So uh, by varying the seed value, the random seed value, you'll actually create different, slightly different extrusions that vary uh, between the ranges shown uh, there. So here I'm altering the taper settings as well. So the taper settings are the, sort of the size of the end face extrusion. Uh, you can also adjust um, how, how much the extrusion rotates by here as well. Again, um, between minimum and maximum values. Um, so here, if I start to increase the amount of extrusions slightly from 1 to 2, you can see that the add-ons randomly started adding extra extrusions that um, are transformed uh, by those minimum and maximum values randomly. So this starts to generate random shapes. And the other key thing here to note is that by default, uh, the add-on will uh, make sure that the faces don't overlap. You can disable that functionality, uh, which I'll show you uh, in a little while. Uh, but here it's extruded standard quad faces, uh, and it's also mirrored the shape uh, by default, uh, which you can also disable. The next most significant option to talk about is um, the favor option in the X, Y, and Z uh, direction. So what this does is gives you some control over um, which faces are randomly extruded based on the um, direction of the faces. So by reducing the value from 1 towards 0, the uh, add-on is less likely to choose those faces. So this is good for creating sort of maybe say slightly flatter shapes here so where I've reduced the Z um, favoring as it were to uh, zero so here uh, I'm creating a lot of sort of flatter shapes I've also reduced the X um, uh, value as well so here you've you've got the add-on adding um, flatter shapes <clears throat> so if I vary the seeds a little bit here you can actually see um, all those different combinations happening. The next option to talk about is uh, beveling the edges. So if I select bevel edges it automatically adds uh, a bevel modifier. So if I um, 
you go down to a sort of more simple shape here, you can see that it's actually added a bevel modifier to smooth out the side edges. So if I create alter the seed value, you can see that it's added a sort of a subtle bevel effect here to give it a little bit more detail. Um, the next option is um, adding a subdivision surface modifier to smooth out the faces here. Uh, so if you uh, cycle through some of the seed values, you'll get um, a lot more organic shapes as well. I'll also show you the option to um, smooth by uh, smooth the faces as well in a moment. This is a check box, check box further down on the menu. So here I'm just sort of playing with the favoring values as well to create different sorts of shapes. If I also show you some of the mirroring options as well, you can see I've unchecked mirror X here, so you can um, also create non-symmetrical shapes. By default, mirror X is selected, um, but you can choose to deselect it and create sort of uh, off the symmetrical shapes. It's also worth uh, briefly talking about um, the subdivide edges option, which is set to zero by default, but if you want to um, create a subdivision on the resulting edges, but you don't want sort of a smooth effect, you can increase this to say one or two. By tab in there, it's created extra intermediary edges and you might want to, uh, to automatically add that to add uh, more detailing to the shape later on. So here, if I just go back to the uh, mirroring options, if you mirror in the Y direction as well, you can start to see uh, symmetrical effect happening there. Uh, if I select mirror in the Z direction, you'll uh, also uh, see sort of a very symmetrical shape emerging. And if I vary the seed values, you'll get different effects, which you can see there. I'll just put it back. There we go. So you can hear I'm sort of experimenting with sort of maybe spaceshipy type of type models here by adjusting the various settings. So there's a, just a few. Um, last few options to talk about here. Um, there's um, preventing face overlap, so by default the shape that's generated uh, will um, uh, attempt to prevent any um, overlapping faces, but you can deselect that, um, especially for performance reasons because it's, um, it's quite a heavy calculation on a large number of extrusions. And you can still get some interesting uh, shapes, they'll just have uh, create meshes that um, overlap. Uh, which might not be ideal. Uh, you can see there if I've tabbed in that there are some overlapping faces there. If I go back and um, select uh, prevent face overlaps again, you can see that it creates shapes uh, without any overlapping edges unless you go crazy on say the rotation options or something like that. I'll just decrease the subdivisions again there. And the last few options here, uh, you can set the faces to smooth shading there, which is good if you combine it with subdivision surface modifier uh, to create more organic shapes. Uh, you can also flip the normals of the shape if you wish. This is quite good, say, if you want the other side of the shape mirrored. Uh, you can adjust, say, the scaling to actually sort of the negative values uh, so you get the other side of the shape mirrored there. Uh, you can also do um, sort of standard translation options like moving the location or the rotation as well. And you can align the shape to the view as well. So there we go. I hope um, this has been useful. There I'm kind of creating uh, sort of maybe sort of a random gun effect there as well and cycling through the options here, I sort of stretch the scale in the y direction. Uh, 
and maybe that sort of sort of a tank type effect there. Uh, sort of lots of different shapes that you could explore. You can smooth it, bevel it, all that sort of thing. So I hope you find this useful. If you've got any new feature requests, do get in touch. Thank you.